Welcome back, everyone. Today is Thursday, May 28th. I'm Coach Kevin. I'm Coach Ronnie. And today's workout is reverse psychology. Before we get into the workout, Coach Ronnie's going to warm us up. Today's warm up, we have a seven minute air map. We are going to start in the same stretch, 15 seconds each side. So, Coach Kevin brings his back leg back a little further, gets deep into that lunge to allow us to open up and stretch through that hip flexor all the way up through our core, our body as he stretches his arms and reaching overhead. Again, you're going to go 15 seconds each side. From there, we're going to the floor on our backs. We're going to Start in a hollow hold position. So legs are up off the ground, upper body, shoulders off the ground, low back is the only point in contact with the floor. From there, we're going 10 hollow rocks, which is really trying to focus on maintaining that shape as you rock back and forth. Uh, this is a good opportunity for those who are um, not really strong in a hollow rock position to really work on different positions in that or getting into that scale option and trying to progress to that full hollow rock. So as you see, tucked version where your knees are in closer to the body is also an option for us. From there, we move into 15 seconds again um, per side of that Spider-Man stretch. So bringing that leg forward in that deep lunge, you can stay in that position, drive that knee out. You can even rotate a little bit to that forward leg just to get a little more stretch. And again, that is 15 seconds per side. We finish the round through those in wraps with five shoulder runs. So just five to 10 meter runs, making sure we just get us a good position, get ourselves warmed up. So again, that warm up, seven minutes of 15 second per side of the Simpson stretch, 10 hollow rocks, 15 per second, 15 seconds per side on the Spider-Man stretch, and then five show runs. Let's get to that warm up, get ready for the walk. Today's workout is reverse psychology. We're going to be doing five rounds per time, 30 reverse lunges, 20 shuttle runs, and then 10 toes to bar or any modification that we need to do today to get through the rounds. So the first thing, let's talk about the reverse lunges. I'm not using any weights today, so it should be fairly simple, kind of focusing in on balance, trying to get through these reps, you know, fairly quickly and consistently. The big thing we're going to be looking for is when Coach Ronnie goes to step back, that both his legs were in 90 degrees. If you notice Coach Ronnie's front leg, 90 degrees, his leg in the rear, also at 90 degrees, and he's lightly touching the ground with that back knee. So as he recovers up, he's gonna alternate legs in the workout here today, stepping back each side, making sure that back knee lightly touches the ground, and each leg gets to 90 degrees. The other thing we're gonna be looking for is that you're controlling that descent. With that knee lightly touching the ground, you shouldn't have to do this with knee pads on, you don't have to do it like on a mat or anything to protect your knee. You don't have any weights or anything today, so really try to focus in on controlling that descent, lightly touching the ground. The other thing we're going to be looking for today, our point of performance, is making sure that we're standing all the way up in between those lunges. As we try to move quickly, there's a tendency to start to bend at the waist and not open that hip all the way and just trying to move quickly and not extending the legs in that hip. So making sure that we complete the repetition, we Hold the standard of movement by doing our repetition, doing our reverse lunge before we alternate to that other leg, that our legs are straight and that our hip is completely open before we start that next breath. The next movement is going to be the shuttle runs. So you're going to set up a cone, a marker, the end of your driveway, whatever it is, roughly 10 meters apart. So for the shuttle runs here today, every time we pass one distance, that's going to count as rep. So it's either 20 complete lengths or it's 10 down and backs. Ultimately, what you'll be doing is 200 meters of the shuttle run each and every round. The big thing we're gonna focus in on today is our turn. So when Coach Ronnie gets towards the end of his shuttle run, he'll decelerate, he's gonna plant his foot, and he's gonna pivot on the ball of that foot. What that's gonna do is allow him to quickly change that direction and stop his momentum, carrying him over the line, and then having to recollect himself in order to change that direction. So again, as you're jogging through, you slow down, you plant and you pivot, and then we change that direction. So what's really going to be important is when you are decelerating towards the end, your last step is the foot you want to have where you can pivot and drive off of. So that tends to be your dominant leg. 
So what we want to be able to do is control, decelerate towards the end of um, our marker, plant that foot, again, rotate on the ball of the foot, quickly change that direction in order to get through these shuttle ones as fast and as efficiently as possible. Now we go into probably the most difficult movement for today is going to be the 10 toes of bar or whatever variation we're going to be doing today. First thing we're going to do is we'll have Coach Ronnie hop up. And he's just going to show us some really good toes of bar here first. So Coach Ronnie's going to jump up and he's going to be going from two positions, the arch and into the hollow. So just like we kind of talked about in the normal here, those positions are going to be really important to be able to string the repetitions together. So when we go into the arch position, what we're doing is we're loading ourselves up for that next repetition. So the hip is all the way open, our feet are together, and we're driving the hips to the front. We're kind of loading ourselves up like a bow and arrow. In the hollow position, he's going to snap himself closed by using his abdominal and his hip flexors. And he's also going to be utilizing the upper body. So we want that lat engaged by pulling down on the bar. The combination of using the abdominals and the hip flexors and utilizing that lat is going to allow Coach Ronnie to bring his feet all the way up to the bar and then be able to load himself up for that next repetition. So if you're someone who's like, I can do one or two toes of bar and things start to fall apart, it's probably because of the timing between those two forces, the abdominals and hip flexors and that lat not working together. So that's something you might want to focus in on. So again, we have Coach Ronnie hop up. We're going to notice that we'll go into those nice arch and hollow positions. And again, you'll notice that he's trying to pull down on that bar as those toes get up close to the bar, loading himself up for that next repetition. Good. What we want to be able to do is get through all these movements unbroken. If we kind of have some close to bar, what we'll talk about are some of the modifications that we can do. The modification that we'll be looking for here today is if you're someone who can bring your toes past the hips, then what we'll do is we'll go toes to a target and essentially is trying to bring the hips higher, or the toes higher than the hips. Coach Ronnie hops up, he's going to load himself up, just like we would with a toe to bar, except for stopping just obviously slightly before bringing the toes all the way to the bar. But again, Coach Ronnie is making sure that he's bringing those toes higher than the hips, almost to that chest height every single time. Now, if you're someone who can't bring the toes up to that position and string them together, we can do some knee tucks. The big thing we're looking for for the knee tucks is actually rolling the hip underneath, still getting that same activation with the lat and the abdominals and the hip flexors by curling our body and bringing it up. So as Coach Ronnie hops up, he's going to bring his knees up, he's going to pull down on that bar, and again, making sure that he's being able to roll the hips underneath not just using the hip flexors and pulling the knees up and getting into this arch back position. So if we find ourselves hanging and we're arch back and we're just doing this, bringing our knees up, that's not what we're trying to do today. We want to make sure that we can really activate and practice that toe to the bar movement, practice those shapes, the arch columns. The last modification we can do is laying down on the ground. So you can hold onto a post or doorway, even a heavy dumbbell or kettlebell, whatever you have at home, just something to be able to anchor yourself down. The toes, again, to the hips are going to be a really good point of focus. So once Coach Ryan brings his legs up and his toes past his hips, this is the point where he's going to lift his hips up and is making sure that his lower back and his glutes come off of the ground. As he returns himself down towards the ground with his feet, setting himself up for that next repetition, he wants to stop just above the floor, and again, making sure that once the toes come up higher than the hips, then he raises the butt and elevates up in order to be able to finish that movement. Good. All right, so let's continue to warm up. Let's figure out what modifications we need to use for today's workout, and we'll come back and we'll talk about some strategy. For strategy, we have three movements today. Um, the first two are pretty straightforward. So this is really trying to focus on getting through those as efficiently as possible. The 30 lunges, um, again, our body weight. So if we're able to, let's try to work through those unbroken. I'm um, really trying to control the solid pace and rhythm through those lunges, making sure we get the full extension at the top of that lunge, make sure we're not banging our knees into the floor when we get to the bottom of that lunge. Um, really, again, if we have to break it up, let's try to break it up at least 15 reps in. We go 15-15. But I believe we should be able to go through all 30 reps um, without having to stop. On um, the shuttle runs, let's talk about and really try to focus on how we move. We should want to focus on moving as, in as much
much of a straight line as possible. You know, shoulder rest, so not really rounding off at the end. I was really thinking about sticking that foot and that um, landing at the end, turning on that dime, and getting ready to run back to that opposite end. All right, now when it comes to the toes of bar today, again, we touched on it earlier, we want to either do the set unbroken, or at the most, give ourselves one break in those 10 repetitions. If you're someone who has a few toes of bar, like we talked about in the beginning, if it's rounds one, two, and three, you know you can do the toes of bar, you know, do that uh, form of the movement. And then if you start to fall off, you know, scale back into one of those modifications where, again, you're able to either do it unbroken, or be able to just finish uh, the sets with just one break. So if I start off with the toast bar, maybe I go to the toast target, and then maybe by the end I might have to do some hanging knee raises if that becomes the case. Uh, we do only have the five rounds here today. Again, the first two movements aren't incredibly difficult. The biggest hiccup might be the toast bar. So again, make sure that you're choosing a modification that allows you to quickly move through the, the movements. What we're trying to do here today is build a lot of capacity, continue to work for those five rounds, no real big rest periods. So get yourself ready to go. We look forward to seeing everyone's times and scores, and we'll get to see you soon.